understand here. And we have two simple points. The concentration of immigrants doesn't lead to bad outcomes. It actually is good. And their plan doesn't tackle the problems of integration. And second, you limit the, in, the freedom of individuals, which is bad on practical grounds, because they know better than the state what is good for them. And second, even if it wouldn't be, then we don't think that the state could determine what the goals are of the individuals, because they're autonomous. First, a couple of points of rebuttal. The only analysis that they gave why the state knows better than individuals is that the individuals, the immigrants, don't have the information about job chance, etc. Well, there's a very simple solution to that. Present them the information on a piece of paper, ladies and gentlemen. Second, Daniel talked about economic chance, that we should equalize them. We don't believe you're equalizing that with it, but suppose we would, then he is supposing that the immigrants actually want economic equality. And for instance, that they, perhaps it's so that they actually prefer cultural goods over the economic goods. And then the state is imposing one way of measuring utility above the ones that the immigrants themselves want. And then the most important thing is that um, for, for their side is the contact hypothesis. They have some idea that if you spread people, they will come, uh, they will talk to their neighbor, and they will integrate. This is simply false. And also with schools, yes, if you mix uh, children of a low income with other children, then all schools will be average. But what is not true is that the low income child will perform better in the other schools. It's just that you're mixing the badly performing child. It's often better even to put them together in a school because they have the same needs, so you can cater to their needs more effectively. So why are the problems of integration not solved? First, one problem is the fear of other cultures of the majority of the people. And this isn't solved in this way, because those people have an irrational fear of people who have headscarves, for instance. And if you are spreading the problem, people actually will feel more threatened, not less. In particular, if you brand them as problems, I mean, you won't say they're a problem, but why would you spread people if you don't think it's a problem to put them together? Second, the hot contact hypothesis. Why is it false? Well, because it's not true that people will interact in a meaningful way with each other. It's not that if you put a Muslim into Christians, they will convert to Christianity. Perhaps they will say hello to their neighbors, but they will not, uh, they will not uh, become meaningfully different. It's not that a cleaning lady, if she lives in neighborhood A, if she moves to neighborhood B, she will become like a manager or something. That's simply not true. Second, um, they will actually seclude to their houses. Why? They already admitted that they are risk-averse. We agree. And they want to feel safe. So, are you, if you are risk-averse and you want to feel safe, are you going to mix with your neighbors, which apparently you don't feel safe with, or are you going to stay at home? Or go to your friends and family who are of your same culture? We think that will happen. In particular, because these people will feel a grudge against the community, which forced them not to live where they wanted. So that's an extra incentive for them to, um, to not interact with their community. So, and the other one is the feeling of rejection of those immigrants. Why, do they, why is that important? Well, if you feel rejected, you'll want to take revenge. You don't want me, well, I don't want you. I will destroy, I will do vandalism, or I will steal. Or, if you don't value me, why would I pursue education? Because you won't hire me anyways. Many Martins say, I don't go to school because they won't hire me anyways. And you, think you don't take this problem away because they feel more stigmatized, because they feel you're treating them as a problem. Finally, very important part is socioeconomic class. People of low socioeconomic class in general perform less in society, but we don't see how their income will rise just by putting them in a different category. <coughs> Second, Michel already explained why immigrant neighborhoods are, um, can be a good thing, and I won't go deeper into that. So, second point three. If it would be really that good for the immigrants, why don't they spread themselves? So that's the first principle of freedom. If the immigrants would know, and we can provide them the information, you will earn more if you live there, why don't they go there? Well, we think that the reason that they don't go there is actually that it's not better for them. One, it might not be true that they perform better economically. Second, people may, um, people may prefer social goods and cultural goods more than their economic goods. They might value to live with people who look like them, where uh, people won't look strange at you when you, work with, when you walk with a headscarf, to be together uh, with your family, that you don't have to travel that much. We think that's perfectly legitimate to do so. So they can make that decision better than the state. Why? Well, I, I mean, I'm an economist, I know it's very difficult to prove that someone is irrational. It's very hard to prove that their preferences are not rational. In order to do that, you need lots of information on the preference of the individual. And they don't have that information. Their claim is based on their assumption that apparently immigrants value economic goods more than other goods. And we think that's simply a 
claim they cannot substantiate. So, so there are two things. Either the state is forcing them to go somewhere else, which actually might give them perhaps more income, but less total uh, utility. And we think that's a bad thing because that's what we care about. If I don't care about income, why do you want to raise my income? Yes, ma'am. So your partner himself has explained to us why economic success leads to better integration in society and to the immigrants' feelings better. Why are you now claiming that it's better for them to not succeed economically? Of course it's better to have more income. I don't say it's worse to have more income. But if you have to sacrifice it against social or cultural goods, then you can make a different balance. And the state doesn't know what balance is best for you. So, last part about freedom. Because there's another reason that we value freedom, and that is autonomy. Even if... Um, um, it's, it's about this. There is no single objective uh, measure to say this is better than that. If you want to say this is better for the individual than something else, you need some measure. And we are saying there is no objective measure to do that. The state doesn't have it, the individual doesn't have it. For instance, one can be income, the other one I want to contribute to my culture, the other one I, f I think my family is very important. And there is no objective way to distinguish between the two. And we think that is the individual who should set which thing they want. Why? Well, because in the end they should set their own goals, and there's very simple intuition behind that. Because they're the ones suffering the consequences. I mean, Jeroen can tell me, you, your goal should be to have more socio-economic income and status. But he doesn't have to be me, he won't suffer the consequences. I will suffer the consequences of my action, and that is why I should be able to choose. Final thing could be that it's indeed it's bad for the immigrants, but perhaps it's better for the whole of society. We think it's false because many um, uh, autochthonous people will not want all the immigrants in their neighborhoods. But even if it would be good for the majority, we feel it's wrong to sacrifice the minority for the majority because then you're treating them um, as not as ends in themselves, but as means to the social good. And why is this so relevant? Because everybody here agrees that housing has a major determinant on your life. And that is why you should be free to choose about that. Thank you.